Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our weekly women's volleyball press conference with head coach Tyler Hildebrand. We will start the press conference with an opening statement from Coach Tyler, then we'll, we will open it up to questions from the media. Well, we got uh, our sixth win in a row. We've had to defend a battle. Um, after four five-set matches in a row, it was nice to get one done in four. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's the uh, same old story. We're, you know, we, we're not playing good enough volleyball to uh, win matches sooner, but we're very grateful that we're fighting and winning matches and staying together. Um, that's, that's when our team's our best, and we know there's a little bit of time where we weren't doing that, and we know, we know not to go there again, and that's what I think last week was about, was able to do that. And you know, we started off really with one of our more poor sets, I think, of the season against Davis. Um, and um, we had some talks and some, some, some changes in how we were going to go about the rest of that set and, or sorry, the rest of that match against Davis. And I, I mean, I've been in volleyball for almost 20 years now. We had 13 aces and zero errors serving. And uh, I've, I've never seen that. So I told the girls today, I'm like, we're not going to ever do that again. And they, they, they got mad at me. And I was like, is, well, I was like, has anyone ever seen that? And, you know, I mean, it's that, that was kind of crazy. And so you know, that's how we serve in practice. We know we have to serve that way. But uh, I think we're learning that when we're not passive and we're aggressive, offensively blocking and um, serving, then we're, we're, we're a lot better team. Today, that was our, you know, no passive touches ever is our slogan right now. And that means every part of the game. And we had that today. And we had, we had probably our best practice in a month today. And um, so we got a tough week ahead. Bakersfield is playing a lot better. And um, I know their record doesn't show that, but they've had a couple really close losses and they're playing better and a couple good wins. And um, obviously Cal Poly is going to be a test. So... Um, we hope we get a big, we get big crowds. Hope people are excited about six in a row. I think they're a little bummed we started one and three, which is understandable. But uh, hopefully they're excited about six in a row and how we're playing, not just um, some of the wins and losses. But uh, we know we have a second chance to go through conference, and we're two games out of first, one game out of second. So we're we're ready to rock. <clears throat> Coach, how urgent is the second half of Big West Conference play, and what are going to be the keys and game plan to pretty much run the table for the most part? Throwing out the kiss of death there, Turn. Um I mean, where we where the urgency has been since we started one and three. I mean, you know, can't you can't? Uh, so you know, for, for us. Uh, we're not looking at running the table per se. We're trying to avoid all of those thoughts. We're trying to take it one match at a time. And we've done that pretty well, I think, in the last six matches. Um, so uh, strategically, it's nice to, you know, Bakersfield's way different because they're running 6-2 now. Cal Poly's pretty much the same, and, you know, we're probably pretty much the same. So uh, some teams are going to be similar to the first time you play them, and other teams are going to be quite a bit different. So... Um, so we have that this week. Um, so as far as game planning goes, it's nice to be familiar with the team. When you're familiar with them, you try to learn the lessons from the last match. So for example, we have to learn a whole new team with Bakersfield because it's 6-2. And, but they still have their same priorities, Palm and 18, 10 and 18. So uh, we got to figure out how that meshes with their 6-2. With Cal Poly, uh, you know, we served them off the court. Um, they're not a great passing team, but they're good at dealing with that because they have great out of system swings. And we did not handle their out of system, so we got to handle their out of system swings because they're great at it. Uh, we got to deal with Dvorak's serve; she's the best server in the conference. There's no question about that. So we got to deal with that. And uh, one other thing that I won't say publicly that we got to work on. So, um, but anyway, you know, they're, they're great at those two skills, so we got to deal with that. Uh, Dylan De La Cruz for the third time Defensive Player of the Week uh, in the Big West Conference. Uh, how big has she been just solidifying the back line? And, and I know you adjust her, uh, where she positions depending on who's on, on the back line with her. So uh, how how much has she adjusted towards that and, and how big has that been? Well, obviously, Libero took we plays left back, but D Dylan was a setter in high school and, and set, you know, set here at times. And so she's actually, I think, better at right back. So it's an easy adjustment for her. 
she handles it well, and Savannah's better at the left back. So, um, so I think luckily we don't have to deal much with that because they're better at those two skills. Just like Tori's a little better on the left and Naz's a little better on the right. So that's that switch that um, we've made there is, is easier too. But um, I tell Dylan about once a week I'm very happy for her. She's been – she's dedicated a lot of her life to this game. And um, I told her when I first – the first Zoom call, I said, Dylan, I don't know what's going to happen. I have no idea who's going to start. I've never been in the gym with you guys. But as a fifth-year senior, you know, I just want you to have a great year. I want you to have some joy and have some fun. And we want it to be special for you because, you know, we have three seniors and we want it to be special for all three of them. But Dylan's been here her whole career. So um, – I just I want the, for those three girls. You know, we always want to. We want you to have a great year, your last year, and send off with a good taste in your mouth. And so the fact that she's starting and start every match and now getting recognized for how well she's playing, I'm just really happy for her. And she's pretty hard on herself, so I have to remind her how well she's doing. So I think the bit, who votes? I don't even know who votes on it. Who vote, Who votes on that? The SIDs. The SIDs. Okay. Um, so thanks to the SIDs for recognizing what she's doing because she's playing. She's playing great. Even when she thinks she's not, she's still playing pretty darn good. So, offensively, your team seems to be fairly high at the moment, with but not a whole lot low. Like, what's what can you say about your offense and how consistently and balanced it can be at times? That's a great question. That <clears throat> that is the question, and that was the. That was the learning curve of the early part of the season. Was that we just weren't executing, you know, and. I certainly got a lot of feedback from some people about what to do, what not to do. But, you know, the, what we're trying to do on offense isn't some, like, thing that isn't known or tested. I've um, uh, been doing offense for a long time, been lucky enough to be exposed to a lot of great systems and some of the better players around. So we know we can do it. And what we're seeing now is we're just doing it more and we're executing it um, as a setter. It can be hard to go fast and be dynamic and be creative and still have good flight and hittable balls. That's a learning curve. The fact that Zayn is able to do that really well right now with really not having much exposure to that, uh, to that, to recently, is a testament to how well she's adapting and how talented she is. And, and that goes for Mo and Tia too. They're doing a great job. Um, so we're asking a lot of our setters. Most most of the time, people ask setters to like. Take the same footwork, set a hittable ball, don't screw it up. <laughs> and they're like, location, location, location. Well, and, and sometimes that might be really good for, for a certain level or whatever, but that is not going to suffice at the next level. That is not going to suffice for our team to beat teams that we are going to need to beat this year and over the next few years. So, you know, we're dreaming big on it. So it's a lot on Zayna and our setters. Um, and as hitters, most of our setter hitters have never hit fast offense. Morgan never had. Uh, Natalie did, but not in club, and she, you know, she didn't play last year. Um, Tori certainly, Tori's getting high balls for the last three years, and that, that's nothing against where they were. It's just that's what they were hitting. And so, if you guys go look at Tori's, you know she's getting these like moon balls with three blocks. So certainly adjustment for her. So we're asking them to change, and it just takes time. And so now, to your question is, now we're starting to get more comfortable. We can problem solve better. Uh, we're setting a little bit more hittable balls still creating and then our hitters are better at adjusting and not trying to fix so the key in a good in a dynamic offense is you can't try to fix the last play or the last set because the next pass is gonna be a little different the next set's gonna be a little different and we're not trying to get hitters right here every time we're trying to stress the block to be more balanced as you said terrence so um so i think the answer there is just we're getting better at it we're we're, we're dealing with the problems better we're we're from a mindset, not trying to be so perfect and just adapting and adjusting, which is the international offense. Uh, you did mention uh, Tori O'Sullivan coming in and, and she's been producing uh, the last week, really. Uh, what have you seen from her just being able to help your team really gut out some wins? Tori did a great job. Uh, Tori's been the number one go-to player on San Diego State for four years, or at least the last two or three. Um, came here, we gave her a pretty long run at, at playing opposite, and she was doing okay, but Katie was doing better. So we made the switch, and Tori's such a great teammate and a great person and a great competitor that she 
lost their starting spot or got subbed out and then played better in practice and then switched positions kind of by her choice and was playing better. And that's pretty rare. Usually, you know, you kind of spiral. So that's just a testament to who Tori is and, 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 and what a great person and teammate she is and also a great competitor to play better. So she's been playing really good over the last two weeks on the left. Um, it causes, you know, it, it's a little, you know, our passing has to adjust a little bit because Tori doesn't play back row. When JJ and Morgan or whoever, or Natalie are on the left, we just, they pass the whole time. It's really nice and we're a good passing team. So, so we have to figure that out. We run out of subs sometimes, so it changes some things, but her offense, you know, she, she's hitting three, she hit 357 this, this weekend. So, and she's been doing that in practice. So, you know, the, the, the sub came because, um, you know, when JJ's passed, so JJ's hit, you know, hasn't hit a high percentage in every match, but she's passed really well in almost every match. So that's why we haven't subbed her out because she was she was passing great. Riverside's one of the better pet serving teams in our conference actually, and um, so they were lighting us up a little bit. And so JJ's hitting number was low and her passing number, so we're like, hey, here's an opportunity to see what Tori can do. She was great, so we decided to start her the next night. And so you know, right as of now, that's our that's our lineup. And uh, we like JJ coming in and passing in the back row because we still get JJ's bick and JJ's great on the bick and. So, you know, so we weren't hitting great on the big at the beginning of the year, but same thing, you stick to it, and we know how to run a big, I, I can assure you that. And so, um, yeah, I mean, if you look at our last six, you know, we're hitting like 240 on a big, everyone else hitting zero against us. So it's another leap of faith. We trust that our women can do something that most teams don't think their, their team can do, So, and we're doing it. So that's why we don't want to lose JJ on the big. And then having one two times on the road with in a conference that is tough to win on the road and having won six in a row. How big is that for the team's morale and for the team mentally as you have two home games this week? I think it's huge. Um, you can feel it. You know, we're feeling better because we've won six in a row. Also getting out those five setters. I mean, it's been a, it's been a lot of emotional matches and, um, so we have some momentum, we have some belief. We're also playing better in a lot of areas. Um, our blocking needs to get better right now. Uh, we, 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 were, we were great blocking today in practice. Uh, we got a few more days of that, but um, feels a lot different than it did after four matches in conference to tell you that much. Uh, the staff, uh, every, everybody's in the tent. I mean, you go one and three and that, that's a lot of respect to the four teams we played. It's not that like, oh, we should have you know been something different. It's just it's hard to lose uh, three out of four matches. So to win the next six, you know, we're we're confident. We know that. I mean, you saw uh, Irvine beat uh, Cal Poly, and I've been telling people we have a lot of great coaches in this conference. I think it's, the coaching staffs are getting better and better. Nikki is doing a great job at Riverside. I mean, um, that team played incredibly hard and they were like all over the place I mean it was just it was really cool to see how much heart that team is playing with and their AD came up and talked anyway the point is like we have a lot of good coaches right now doing good things with their team and so I think you're going to see a little bit more movement than historically with just one or two teams running the table and you can see that Bakersfield took quite a five almost beat him so you know I think the second half is going to be a little wild and crazy and it's going to be kind of fun and I'm excited about that. Happy for our staffs and happy for our teams in this conference. Next year, I think we're going to have a great preseason in this conference. You know, um, we didn't this year, but um, it, it's really exciting right now. I think teams are playing great. So, second half is going to be a little wild. Anything can happen. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. Boom. I think I think our conference. Is